chap with a name like Dick Deadeye to be a popular character, now can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's asking too much, ain't it? It is. Yeah. You've such a face and a form as mine. The noblest sentiments sound like the black utterances of a depraved imagination. 
It is human nature. I am resigned. But tell me, who's the youth whose faltering feet with difficulty bear him on his course? That is the smartest lad in all the fleet, Rafe Ragstraw. Rafe, this name! Uremos, Uremos. To see the pearl of minstrelsy, a bird of blushing beauty, for whom proud nobles sigh and with each other vie to do her menial's duty. To do her menial's duty. A suit, a lowly born, with hopeless passion torn, and poor beyond denying, has dared for her to pine at whose exalted shrine a world of wealth is sighing. A world of wealth is sighing. Unlearned he not save that which love has taught, for love had been his tutor. Oh, pity, pity me, a captain's daughter she, and I, that lowly
to I? A worthy captain's child won't have nothing to say to a poor chap like you, will she, lads? No, 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 no. Captain's daughters don't marry four mast hands. Shame, shame, shame. Dick Zenon. Them sentiments are yours are a disgrace to our common nature. But it is a strange anomaly that the daughter of a man who hails from the quarterdeck may not love another who lays out on the foyard arm. For a man is but a man, yes. whether he hoists his flag at the main truck or his slacks on the main deck. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Ah, it's a queer world. Dick Dead I have no desire to press hardly on you, but such a revolutionary sentiment is enough to make an honest sailor shudder. My lads, our gallant captain has come on deck. Hey. Hey. Let us greet him as so brave an officer and so gallant a seaman he serves, eh? Aye, aye. I'm sad and sorry. My daughter Josephine, the fairest flower that ever blossomed on ancestral timber, is sought in marriage by Sir Joseph Porter, our Admiralty's first lord. But for some reason, she does not seem to tackle kindly to it. Sir Joseph, for I know too well the anguish in your heart that yet set vainly. But see, here comes your most attractive daughter. I go farewell. A plump and pleasing person. <laughs>
child, I grieve to see that you are a prey to melancholy. You should look your best today, for Sir Joseph Porter, KCB, will be arriving here this afternoon to claim your promised hand. Oh, father, your words cut me to the quick. I can esteem, reverence, venerate Sir Joseph, for he is a great and good man. But, oh, I cannot love him. My heart is already given. It is, then, as I feared. Given? And to whom? Not some gilded lordling. No, father. The object of my love is no lordling. Oh, pity me, for he is but a humble sailor on board your own ship. Impossible! Yes, it is true. True, true. A common sailor? Oh, fie! I blush for the weakness that allows me to cherish such a passion. I hate myself when I think of the depths to which I have stooped in permitting myself to think tenderly of one so ignobly born. But I love him. I love him. I love him. Come, my child. Let us talk this through. In a matter of the heart, I would not coerce my daughter. I attach but little value to rank or wealth. But the line must be drawn somewhere. A man of that station may be brave and worthy, but at every step he would commit solecism that society would never pardon. I have thought of this night and day, but fear not, father. I have a heart, and therefore I love. But I am your daughter, and therefore I am proud. Though I carry my love with me to the tomb, he shall never, never know it. You are my daughter after all. But see, Sir Joseph's barge approaches, manned by twelve trusty oarsmen, and accompanied by the admiring crowd of sisters, cousins, and aunts who attend him wherever he goes. Uh, retire, my child, to your cabin. Take this. His photograph with you, it may help to bring you to a more reasonable frame of mind. My own thoughtful father. Yeah. <laughs> 
and the monarch of the sea, the ruler of the Queen's Navy, was praised Great Britain loudly chants. And we are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And we are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. But at anchor here I ride, my bosom swells with pride, and I snap my fingers at a foeman's taunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts, his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. But when the breezes blow, I generally go below and seek the seclusion of the cabin grants. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. I was a lad, I served a term as office boy to an attorney's firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor and I polished off the handle of the big front door. He polished off the handle of the big front door. I polished off that handle so carefully that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He polished off the handle so carefully that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. As office boy, I made such a mark that he gave me the post of a junior clerk. I served the rich with a smile so bland, and I copied all the letters in a big round hand. He copied all the letters in a big round hand. I copied all the letters in a hand so free that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He copied all the letters in a hand so free that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. In serving writs, I made such a name that an articled clerk I soon became. I wore clean collars on a brand new suit for the pass examination at the Institute. For the pass examination at the Institute. That pass examination did so well for me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. That pass examination did so well for me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Knowledge, I acquired such a grip that they took me into the partnership. And that junior partnership I win was the only ship that I ever have seen. Was the only ship that I ever have seen. But that kind of ship so suited me that now I am the ruler of the Queen's Navy. But that kind of ship so suited me that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. I grew so rich that I was sent by a pocket bar into Parliament. I always voted at my party's call, and I never thought of thinking for myself at all. He never thought of thinking for myself at all. I thought so little. They rewarded me by making me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He thought so little. They rewarded me by making me the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Now, landsmen all, whoever you may be, if you want to rise to the top of the tree, if your soul isn't fettered to an office stool, be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Stick close to your desks and never go to sea, and you all may be rulers of the Queen's Navy. Stick close to your desks and never go to sea, and you all may be rulers of the Queen's Navy. It is a fine crew, Sir Joseph. A British sailor is a splendid fellow, Captain Corcoran. A splendid fellow indeed, Sir Joseph. I hope you treat your crew kindly, Captain Corcoran. Indeed, I hope so, Sir Joseph. Never forget that they're the bulwarks of England's greatness, Captain Corcoran. So I have always considered them, Sir Joseph. No bullying, I trust. No strong language of any kind. Oh, never, Sir Joseph. Oh. Hardly ever, Sir Joseph. They're an excellent crew and do their work thoroughly without it. Don't patronize them, sir. Pray don't patronize them. Certainly not, Sir Joseph. That you are their captain is an accident of birth. I cannot permit these noble fellows to be patronized because an accident of birth has placed you above them and them below you. 
I'm the last person to insult a British sailor, Sir Joseph. You're the last person who did, Captain Corcoran. <laughs> I desire that splendid seaman to step forward. <laughs> no, no, the, uh, the other splendid seaman. Rafe Rackstraw, three paces to the front. March! If what? I beg your pardon? I don't think I understand you. If please. Oh, yes, of course. If you please. You're a remarkably fine fellow. Yes, Your Honor. And the first-rate seaman, too, I'll be bound. There's not a smarter topman in the Navy, Your Honor. Though I say it, who shouldn't? Not at all. Proper self-respect, nothing more. Can you dance a hornpipe? No, Your Honor. Oh, that's a pity. All sailors should dance hornpipes. I'll teach you one this evening after dinner. Now tell me, don't be afraid. How does your captain treat you, eh? A better captain don't walk the deck, Your Honor. Good. I like to hear you speak well of your commanding officer. I dare say you don't deserve it. But still, it does you credit. Can you sing? I can um a little, Your Honor. Oh, then um, <coughs> hum this at your leisure. It is a song I have composed for the use of the Royal Navy and is indeed designed to encourage independence of thought and action in the lower branches of the service and to teach the principle that a British sailor is any man's equal, excepting mine. <laughs> now, Captain Falkland, a word with you on your cabin on a tender and sentimental subject. Aye, aye, Sir Joseph. Bosom! In commemoration of this joyous occasion, see that extra grog is served out to the ship's company at seven bells. Hooray! Beg pardon? If what, Your Honor? If what? I don't think I understand you. If you please, Your Honor. What? That gentleman is quite right. If you please. please. If you please. For I hold that on the seas, the expression, if you please, a particularly gentlemanly tone implants. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. Oh, Sir Joseph's a true gentleman. Courteous and considerate to the very humblest. True, Bosun, but we are not the very humblest. What Sir Joseph has explained our true position to us. As he says, a British seaman is any man's equal, <laughs> uh, excepting <laughs> his. <laughs> and if Sir Joseph says that, is it not our duty to believe him? Well, well spoke, well spoke. Ah, you're on the wrong tack. And so is he. He means well, but he don't know. When people have to obey other people's orders, equality is out of the question. Horrible! Horrible! Dick Denoy, if you go for to infuriate this here ship's company too far, I won't answer for being able to hold him in. I'm shocked! That's what I am, shocked! <laughs> Messmates, my mind's made up. I'll speak to the captain's daughter and tell her like an honest man of the honest love I had for her. Aye, aye. Is not my love as good as another's? Yes, is not yes. my heart as true as another's? Yes, right. Have I not hands, eyes, ears, and limbs like another? Aye, aye, aye. Aye. True, I lack birth. You were birthed on board this very ship. <laughs> <laughs> I had forgotten that. Well, messmates, what do you say? Do you approve of my determination? We do. I don't. Ah. for him the song that Sir Joseph has kindly composed for us. Perhaps it'll bring this here miserable creature to a proper state of mind. A British star is a soaring soul as free as a mountain bird. 
His energetic fist should be ready to resist a dictatorial word. His nose should, his nose should punch, punch, and his lips should curl, his cheeks should flame, and his brow should his bow, his bosom should heave, and his heart should be and, and his fist be ever his ready for a knock. His eyes should flash with an inborn fire, his brow with scorn be wrung. He never should bow down to a domineering frown for the time of a time. His foot should stand, and his throat should grow, his hair should twirl, and his face should scowl, his eyes should flash, and his breath protrude, and this should be his customary act. Should stamp and his throat should growl, his hair should swell and his face should smile, and his eyes should flash and his breath protrude, and this should be his customary attitude. His attitude, his attitude, his attitude. meet a combination of antithetical elements which are at eternal war with one another, driven hither by subjective influence, thither by objective emotion, wafted one moment into blazing day, by mocking hope plunged the next into the Sumerian darkness of tangible despair. I am but a living ganglion of irreconcilable antagonisms. I hope I make myself clear, lady. Perfectly. Oh, if I dared! But no, the thought is madness. Dismiss these foolish fancies. They taught you but needlessly. Come, make one effort. I will, one. Josephine! Sir! I, even though Joe's armory were launched to the head of the audacious mortal whose lips, unhallowed by relationship, dared to breathe that precious word. And yet would I breathe it once, and perchance be silent evermore. Josephine, in one brief breath, I will concentrate the hopes, the doubts, the anxious fears of six weary months. Josephine, I am a British sailor, and I love you. Sir, this audacity! on the part of a common sailor. Common? Oh, the irony of the word. Oh, sir, you forget the disparity in our ranks. I forget nothing, haughty lady. I love you desperately. My life is in your hands. I lay it at your feet. Give me hope, and what I lack in education and polite accomplishment, that I will endeavour to acquire. Drive me to despair, and in death alone I shall look for consolation. I am proud and, and cannot stoop to implore. I have spoken, and I await your word. You shall not wait long. 
Your proffered love I haughtily reject. Go, sir, and learn to cast your eyes on some village maiden in your own poor rank. They should be lowered before your captain's daughter. <laughs>
She says I am ignobly born and cuts my hopes adrift, me lady. Oh, cruel one, oh, cruel one. She spurns your suit. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. I told you so. I told you so. Show me some haste. Oh, we this haste. Love comes to life to high and low. Return you the sailor's cruel face. And shall we still do insult? No, no. You must submit. You are but slaves. A lady, she, ho, 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 ho. You lowly toilers of the way. She spurns you all. I told you so. Show me some haste, or we must slay. Show me some haste, or we must slay. You are but slaves. Love comes to life to high and low. Return to the sailor's cruel face. She spends you all, and shall we still do insult? She spends you all, I told you so. My friends, my leave of life I'm taking. Which now is all a blaze. How captain, ere the day is gone, will be extremely down upon the wicked men who are employed to make his Joseph painless coy in many various ways. Oh, oh joy, your rapture unforeseen, for, for now the sky is all serene. The cloud of day, the orb of night, the sun is in sight above the sky. Man 
beauty? It may be. Who is poor little buttercup that she should expect his glance to fall on one so lowly? And yet if he knew, if he only knew. Ah, little buttercup, still on board. That's not quite right, little one. It would have been more respectable to have gone on shore at dusk. True, dear captain, but the recollection of your sad pale face seemed to chain me to the ship. I would fain see you smile before I go. Ah, little buttercup, I fear it will be long before I recover my accustomed cheerfulness, for misfortunes crowd upon me. <laughs> And all my old friends seem to have turned against me. Oh, no. Do not say all, dear captain. That were unjust to one at least. True, for you are staunch to me. If ever I were to give my heart again, methinks it would be to such a one as this. I am cut to the heart by your innocent regard for me. And were we differently situated, I think I could have returned it. But as it is, I fear I can be no more to you than a friend. I understand. You hold aloof from me because you are rich and lofty, and I poor and lowly. But take care. The poor bumboat woman has gypsy blood in her veins, and she can read destinies. Destinies? There is a change in store for you. A change? I be prepared. Things are seldom what they seem. Skimpin' masquerades as cream. Pilos pass as patient leathers. Jackdaws strut in peacock's feathers. Very true, so they do. Black sheep dwell in every fold. All that glitters is not gold. Stalks turn out to be 
that is so. Though to catch a drift, I'm striving. It is shady, it is shady. I don't see at what you're driving, mystic lady, mystic lady. Stern convictions of me stealing, that the mystic lady is dealing in oracular revealing. Yes, I know that is so. Though I'm anything but clever, I could talk like that forever. Once a cat was killed by care, for me brave deserve the fair. Very true, so we do. Wink is often good as nod, spoils a child who spares a rod. Thirsty lambs run foxy dangers, dogs are found in many mangers. Frequently, I agree. Or a cat, the chest, the snatches, or not come and show new patches, only count the cheek that hatches, men are grown up catchy catches. Yes, I know that is so. Oh, to catch my drift, he's striving. Oh, to symbol, oh, to symbol. When he sees a poor drunk driving, let him tremble, let him tremble. Though a mystic tone I borrow, he shall learn the truth in sorrow. Me today and gone tomorrow. Yes, I know. That is so. For me, speak so you borrow. I shall learn the truth in sorrow. Let him tremble, let him tremble. Yes, I know. That is so. Incomprehensible as her utterances are, I nevertheless feel that they are dictated by a sincere regard for me. But to what new misery is she referring? Time alone can tell. Uh, Captain Corcoran, I am much disappointed in your daughter. In fact, I don't think she'll do. She won't do, Sir Joseph. I'm afraid not. The fact is that although I have urged my suit with as much eloquence as is consistent with an efficient utterance, I have done so hitherto without success. How do you account for this? Really, Sir Joseph, I hardly know. Josephine is, of course, sensible of your condescension. She naturally would be. But perhaps your exalted rank dazzles her. You think it does? I can hardly say. She is a modest girl, and her social position is far below your own. It may be that she feels she is not worthy of you. That is really a very sensible suggestion, and displays more knowledge of human nature than I had given you credit for. See, she comes. If your lordship would kindly reason with her, and assure her, officially, that it is a standing rule at the Admiralty that love levels all ranks. Her respect for an official utterance might induce her to look upon your offer in its proper light. It is not unlikely. I will adopt your suggestion. But soft, she is here. Let us withdraw and watch our opportunity. <laughs>
It has been represented to me that you are appalled by my exalted rank. I desire to convey to you officially my assurance that if your hesitation is attributable to that circumstance, it is uncalled for. Oh, then your lordship is of opinion that married happiness is not inconsistent with discrepancy in rank? I am officially of that opinion. That the high and the lowly may be truly happy together, provided that they truly love one another? Madam, I desire to convey to you officially my assurance that love is a platform upon which all ranks meet. I thank you, Sir Joseph. I did hesitate, but I will hesitate no longer. He little thinks how eloquently he's pleaded his rival's cause. <laughs> Never mind the why and wherefore love can bear to ranks and therefore though his lordship stations mighty, those tremendous be his brain. Though her tastes are mean and flighty and her fortunes poor and plain. Ring the merry bells on board ship, rend the air with warmly one, for the union of my lordship with a humble captain's child. For a humble captain's daughter. For a gallant captain's daughter. And a lord who rules the water. And a tar let the air with joy be laden, rend the songs the air above, for the union of the maiden with the man who wants her love. Never mind the why and wherefore love can never ranks and therefore, though you're not a coronation in my segment scarcely pass, though you occupy a station in the lower middle class. Ring the merry bells on board ship, rend the air with warbling wild, for the union of my soldier with the humble captain's child. For a humble captain's daughter. For a gallant captain's daughter. And a lord who rules the water. And a tar who plows the water. Let the air with joy be laden, rend the songs the air above, for the union of the maiden with the man who owns her love. Ably have you played your part. You have carried conviction to my hesitating heart. Bring the merry bells on board ship, rend the air with warbling heart. For the union of the rules with the humble captain's son. For the humble captain's daughter. For the gallant captain's daughter. And the lord who rules the water. And the tar who plows the water. Let the air with joy be laden. Bring the merry bells on board ship. For the union of the maiden. For the union of my lord. Then the songs the air above. For the man who owns her love. Then the songs the air above. For the man who owns her are invariably regarded as unanswerable. <laughs> At last, my fond hopes are to be crowned. My only daughter is to be the bride of a cabinet minister. The prospect is Elysian. Captain! You here? Don't. Don't shrink from me, Captain. I'm unpleasant to look at, and me name's again me, but I ain't as bad as I seem. What would you with me? Uh, I'm come to give you warning. Indeed, you propose to leave the Navy then? <laughs> no, no. You miss 
You have gone too far. I'm very sorry to disparage a humble form of lad. But to seek your captain's child in marriage, why, damn it, it's too bad. Oh, yes, damn it, it's too bad. Oh, yes, damn it, it's too bad. Did you hear him? Did you hear him? Oh, the monster yes. of the bear. Don't go near him. Don't go near him. He is swearing. He is swearing. It is not easy to express my amazement, my surprise. You may let me question of my eyes. My lord, one word. The facts are not before you. The word was injudicious, I allow. But hear my explanation, I implore you, and you will be indignant too, I vow. I will hear of no defense. Attempt none if you're sensible. That word of evil sense is wholly indefensible. Go, Ribwood, get you hence to your cabin with celerity. This is the consequence of ill advised asperity. This is the consequence of ill advised asperity. But I'll teach you all ere long to refrain from language strong. But I haven't any sympathy for ill bred taunts. No more have his sisters nor his cousins nor his aunts. No more have his sisters nor his cousins nor his aunts. No more have his sisters nor his cousins nor his aunts. His sisters nor his cousins will be reckoned on my cousins nor his aunts. For he is an English man.
Now tell me, my fine fellow, for you are a fine fellow. Yes, Your Honor. How came your captain so far to forget himself? I'm quite sure you had given him no cause for annoyance. You see, Your Honour, it was thus wise. I'm only a topman, a mere foremast hand. Oh, don't be ashamed of that. Your position as a topman is a very exalted one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Your Honour, love burns as brightly in the forecastle as it does on the quarterdeck. And Josephine is the fairest bud that ever blossomed upon a poor fellow's wildest dreams. Darling. She is the figurehead of my ship of life. The bright beacon that guides me into my port of happiness. The rarest and the purest gem that ever sparkled upon a poor but worthy fellow's trusting brow. Very pretty. Very pretty. Insolent sailor, you should repent this outrage. Seize him. Oh, Sir Joseph, spare him, for I love him tenderly. Pray don't. I'll teach this presumptuous mariner to discipline his affections. Uh, have you such a thing as a dungeon on board? We yeah. have. Yeah. They have. Oh. Then load him with chains and take him there at once. Farewell, my own. Light of my life. Again, it is not easy to express my amazement, my surprise. Again, you may discover from my eyes. How terrible is the human eyes. Hold. Here upon your loss you lay much stress. A long concealed pride I would confess. One was 
understand that Captain Cochran and Rafe were exchanged in childhood's happy hour, that Rafe is really the captain and the captain's Rafe. That, that, that was the idea I intended to convey officially. And very well you have conveyed it. Aye, aye, Your Honour. Dear me. Let them appear before me at once. It is hard, is it not, my dear? Oh. This is a very singular occurrence. I congratulate you both and desire that splendid seaman to step forward. Corcoran, three paces to the front, march! If what? Uh, I don't think I understand you. If you please. What? The gentleman is quite right, if you please. If you please. <coughs> A remarkably fine fellow. Yes, Your Honour. So it seems that you were Rafe and Rafe was you. <laughs> so it seems, Your Honour. Well, I need not tell you that after this change in your condition, a marriage with your daughter will be out of the question. Don't say that, Your Honour. Love levels all ranks. It does to a considerable extent, but it does not level them as much as that. <laughs> Here, take her, sir. And mind you, treat her kindly. Oh, bliss, oh, rapture. Oh, bliss, oh, rapture. Sad my lot and sorry, what shall I do? I cannot live alone. What will he do? He cannot live alone. Fear nothing while I live alone. Desert you. I'll soothe and comfort your declining days. No, don't do that. <laughs> yes, indeed, I'd rather. Tomorrow morn, our vows shall all be plighted. Three loving pairs on the same day united. For <laughs> joy or rapture. The cold is high, is all serene, the gold of day, the orb of luck, and sun is then sign high above, the sky is all amazing, with wooing words and loving songs, which is the guiding bars along, and if we find the maiden court, we'll learn the fourth before his joy, in Before my fall, I was captain of you all. I'm a member of the crew. And though before his fall, he was captain of us all. He's a member of the crew. I shall marry with a wife in my humble rank of life, and you, my own, are she. I will wander to and fro, but wherever I may go, I will never be untrue to thee. What never? No, never. What never? And ever. Be untrue to thee. Three cheers and one cheer more for the former captain of the pin of four. We give three cheers and one cheer more for the captain of the pin of four. Oh, he loves little buttercup, dear little buttercup. Oh, I could never tell why, but still he loves buttercup. Sweet little buttercup, I. I love little 
married thee. I'll be true to the devotion that my love implants. Then goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts, especially your cousins whom you reckon up by dozens. Goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts, especially your cousins whom you reckon up by dozens and your aunts. Oh.